Hi, my name is Yunar Hernandez and I'm an application engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be getting started in SOLIDWORKS CAM. To use it, you must be on a subscription service with SOLIDWORKS or you can purchase the license separately. I already have that on mine. I have my part ready and of course, I want to be able to create a part and spit out a G-code. To turn it on, it's really simple to do. I can just click on the drop down arrow next to options and go to add-ins just like you would for simulation and here you would find it. I currently have it checked on so that every time the program starts it will automatically turn on the cam as well and I also have it checked on here for it to be active right now. So now I'll click OK. We'll also notice that we have our SOLIDWORKS cam tab active. Here I can find all my cam features and cam commands. As well as here in the property manager, we now have some added tabs. Here we have our cam feature tree where you'll see all the cam features and from where we set up our machine, our stock, and our coordinate system. As well as the operation tree, which there's none because there are no operations that have been created. And the tools that will currently be used, these tools come from the machine that's been selected and we'll talk about that in a bit. So let's go ahead and get started. We have our part ready and now we get to use the magic that is SOLIDWORKS. I'll go ahead and define the machine and here in the machine tab we're going to find the machines that we've created that are based on the unit system that we'll be using as well what tools will be included. Um, for this one I'll be using Millinch. You'll also notice that we have turn machines. We'll talk about that in a later video. So let's go ahead and stick to Millinch. And now I'll go to tool crib and it'll show me the list of tool cribs that are available and are associated to that machine. For now, I'll use the second tool crib, and here it's now active, and I'll see all the tools that are involved here. So here I can see we have some flat ends, some countersinks, some ball nose. I can see their names, the diameters that they have. I can add and remove tools if I liked. We're good as it is. Let's move on to our post processor. Now here in the post processor, it's very important to include this because this is how SOLIDWORKS is going to be able to spit out that G-code. As you can tell, we have the ability to add controllers for Alan Bradley. There's also Haas. If anyone here works with FANUC, we also have those available. Now if you're wondering how it is that you can attain these post processors, it's actually really simple to do. You can go on our website. You'll find a link there in our description. Go ahead and click on there if you need to add a post processor. In case the controller that you're looking for we don't have, you can always reach out to us and we can create a custom one for you. So for this example, we're just going to use a generic one. So I'll go ahead and select it. It's now active and we're ready to go. Now we're going to tell SOLIDWORKS the stock, right? Because we need to see the part that's going to be used to mill this part out of, right? And from here, we can adjust the material that the stock is coming from. So I have stainless steel, there's nylon, polyurethane. Um, we're going to stick to 304L, so that's a stainless steel that we're going to be machining right now. And it can be based on a bounding box, the stock itself, that SOLIDWORKS can create. Or if someone uses a sketch, you can even reference parts or configurations, if you're using that now, as your stock. We'll leave it as a bounding box. And of course, that bonding box can be adjusted. We can increase it in the X direction. Or we can do it in the Y as well. So I can make it make that height bigger. Or control the Z direction if needed. It's good as it is. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we can set up our coordinate system. Now this is very important because this is going to tell in what direction the spindle will be coming, right? So currently if I look, the Z direction is not correct because if you're coming from the top, that doesn't represent it. It's coming from a left horizontal direction. Now we can actually tell it where that origin is going to be. We recommend you use the origin that you're currently using inside your machine. So for us, we'll just go ahead and put it here. And like I mentioned, that Z direction is incorrect. Another option is that you can use the part bounding box vertex. 
and also use these points to change it up or the stock bounding box vertex. We'll leave it as what we've chosen. And like I said, that Z direction needs to be changed. The orientation is wrong and it should be going up instead of in a horizontal direction. So I'll select this edge as a reference. And from here we can change it, right? It's currently going down and that's also wrong because then the bit would be coming from down here instead of coming from the top. So I'll just reverse the direction. Now it's in the correct orientation. We don't have to worry about breaking any tools. So we'll click OK. And as it is, we're ready to go, right? The coordinate system has been set up. We've defined the machine and also told it what kind of stock we'll be using. Now we're going to let SOLIDWORKS do the work for us. Although it is possible to do manual cam features, for now we'll let SOLIDWORKS do it for us. So it's as easy as clicking on Extract Machinable Feature. And there, SOLIDWORKS main in a regular slot. Of course, we still need operations, right? My rough mills, my counter mills, my finishes. So all I have to do now is just click on Generate Operation Plan. And SOLIDWORKS does that for me. See that? Now I can see the operations that have been used, some rough mills and a contour mill, as well as the tools that it's using to create those operations. If I click over here on the Tool tab, you'll notice that the tools are black. Those that are black, I mean, represent tools that are currently being used in the operations. Those that are blue are not currently being used. So if we hover over them, we can see that we still need our toolpath. So let's go ahead and generate the toolpath. And there it is. See that? So now we can see how the machine would move, but it's not enough. I need a visual representation. So I can just click on simulate toolpath. And again, I can see where materials there, just like you would in your display styles with your part, you can change it the way it looks. I currently have mine shaded display for the actual tool bit, as well as for the holder. We can make that translucent and we just hit play and we can see it go. Now it's currently going a little too fast. So I can adjust the speed, put it there. Maybe we want to make it even slower so I can just drag that arrow. Or you want to speed it up and I'll put it about right here. So that's the beauty is that we can actually see how it's working. See if we like it, if there's any areas that have material left over. And if we're okay, we can click OK and just spit out that G code. If not, we could always go back and readjust the part, make changes, right? So as we can tell, no materials left over. So we can spit out the G code. It's as simply as going up back to our SOLIDWORKS command tab and clicking here where it says post process. We're going to save this as example. And now we'll click play so I can do the G code and of course we want to see the line so I'll open the G code file and there we have it line by line SOLIDWORKS went ahead and spit out the code for us and we didn't have to manually do that so it's very simple to do very straightforward and again if you guys have any comments or suggestions let us know in the comment section go ahead and give us a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos concerning CAM